Black History Month is important because it reminds us of the contribution of black people throughout history and more recently. It is an opportunity to celebrate and remember those folks who aren't normally told through our history books or in our classrooms. But for the church, it's also an opportunity to thank God for the contribution of people of colour to our world today through, through their activities and what they've done. Black History Month is very important um, because it, it pays attention to the valuable contribution of people of colour, global majority people throughout the centuries in every nation. Black History Month it is important because it values every individual, regardless of status or of position or gender. Black History Month is important because it's not just the history of global people, but it's the history of all people. So we should celebrate all history. It's equal, it's not superior, and it should not be erased, but it should be included. And that's what the aim of Black History Month has been for many, many years. My goodness, that's a really good question. I have always been, I think, excited about Black people's contribution in history uh, from Roman times. I think we tend to forget that Black people have been around for, um, you know, hundreds of years in Britain. I remember when I was a student reading a book by a guy called Pete Fryer called Staying Power. And that just excited me because I didn't realize there were people from North Africa who came over during Roman times. And then recently I discovered uh, a character called Hadrian of Canterbury, who was a North African Christian who came over to teach at Canterbury. Um, uh, he was from a, the Berber tribe. And, you know, the fact that he turned down to be the first Archbishop of Canterbury in the sixth century just blew my mind because I wasn't told about him at school. Other people like Mary Seacole. Uh, and again, I discovered Mary Seacole when I was older. And understanding her contribution to helping soldiers in the Crimea was a huge revelation. So he was a, a nurse from Jamaica in the uh, 19th century who took herself off to the Crimea to help the soldiers there. And she was seen as a bit of a hero by those soldiers. But again, she was lost uh, in the telling of our history and then rediscovered in the 1980s. Strangely, key people for me, um, as, a, as a youngster growing up, um, were people all around me, uh, of course, people I, I, I saw, the elders who in, inspired me. As I got older and um, in my late 20s, I had the awesome privilege of going to South Africa and meeting with people who inspired me in, in terms of resisting that, that system of, of apartheid. So in 1991, I had the great privilege of speaking with Walter Zuzulu, um, a man of great stature, but also hearing the stories of Steve Biko and many others who resisted oppression and fought for equality. And I, I can remember many uh, conversations uh, I would hear uh, black South Africans and sometimes white South Africans uh, saying, who tells the story? Who writes history? So black history is important because it is history. 
Black History Month, it is about celebrating the contributions of um, people, uh, numerous people uh, who have played their part in contributing uh, to equality, harmony, diversity. When I come a bit nearer, well, when I come home, there the, are the scores of people who are key for me in terms of encouragement. Uh, I don't call them heroes. Uh, they're just people who live uh, um, a great example. And a few years ago, Bernie Grant, uh, for me, Paul Batan, uh, people who politically thought this is what they wanted to commit their lives to in helping bring equality and worth uh, to the black experience. And as I've said before, black experience isn't superior uh, and no color, no, no tribe, no culture should be superior than of any other. But no culture, tribe experience should be trodden down. And I learned that via Bernie Grant, uh, fighting for equal rights in housing, in education uh, in London, watching their lives unfold. Paul Botang, uh, the same. I'm greatly encouraged by the many artists, uh, people of colour, who write poetry, have that gifting to tell the story, their story, uh, stories that others haven't been able to tell, where they can put that in poem, poetry and in song. They're my heroes, ordinary people, as well as people we know uh, from history. So I'm greatly encouraged by the people in the pew over the years, being a part of um, a number of churches, seeing the faithful people of color, black people, Asian people, contribute to the ministry, uh, to God's church. They're people who inspire me. Yeah, I remember people like Rosa Parks and, um, you know, sitting on the bus, uh, the bus boycott in the 60s, which started the whole civil rights movement with Martin Luther King. And then, you know, nearer to home, as you suggested, uh, our first MPs and politicians who really, you know, put their head above the parapet to say, that people who are UK, minority, ethnic, have a role to play in politics. Um, and they that, you know, went on to inspire me also. But I also remember people like um, Alice Walker um, and their writing and reading as a young child some of the, the books by African-American authors that my parents got from America. And listening to the stories which related to me and seeing pictures which related to me as a young person growing up, that had an enormous impression on me. So the whole idea of visual images and heroes and sheroes are vital to our sense of identity and who we are and where we're located in this world. So yeah, they are vital. Well, I guess for the Church of England, because we do not, at this moment in time, fully represent uh, all our constituencies, it's important to remind ourselves of uh, the historical legacy of global majority heritage people have played in the Anglican Church. So I recall my own family story that we have been attending an Anglican church from about the 17th century and that blows my mind and if we don't hear stories of those who have been Anglicans globally throughout the world then we don't appreciate and have a wider picture of what the Anglican church is. So it's said that the average Anglican communicant, if you look at it at a global 
from a global perspective is somebody who has been in the mother's union from the global south, mostly Africa, under the age of 30. Now, that would not necessarily be the impression that we get about the Anglican Church at all. And then nearer to home, when I think about the first bishop that was ordained in the Anglican Church, was a bishop in Africa in the 19th century. And many people don't appreciate that. They think it's much more recent history. So, so those things are really important to us to remind us of our heritage. I'm not a cradle Anglican, as you know, as many know, but I do recall um, growing up and, well, seeing in, on the streets um, white clergy walking, visiting, speaking with uh, the neighborhood, um, all the time, white clergy. Uh, inner city Leeds, where we're, we're from, there was the, the, the Round Hay Church, the Chapel Town Church, and the Hare Hills Church, all churches that had black people, global majority people in, Yet all the time, all the time, they were always white clergy and white teams. Black History Month for the Church of England means equality on every level. So the vocation of black people, the gifts, the skills, the experience, of black people, the nurturing of black people into positions of leadership are equally important. And I've always felt that um, in terms of black people, we have so many missed vocations, so many, because they're not nurtured. All people have chosen to walk, walk by, uh, um, not fulfill uh, their call because of what they've seen or others have seen and experienced. I think Black History Month for the Church of England, um, it, it should um, allow the church to recognize uh, that there is a, in every corner of this land, the, the parish system does work. And you'd be amazed that black people are in more places than people realize. And it's seeking every Christian, every follower of Jesus to find their place and to bring their offering, their contribution. And the Church of England has a role to play in demonstrating equality, but diversity and um, helping people to flourish. Because if that doesn't happen, the mission, God's mission, um, that has been trusted to the church, and I mean the church, the church of God, but also to the church of England, will be diminished if we don't value, use all the contributions. It's a bit like having a football team or a cricket team and only relying on three members of the team. The others are just standing by and watching, and yet they're so gifted, so talented, so right to be there, but not really used and valued. So the Church of England has a long way to go, made a few steps, as we know, but has so, so much further to go in demonstrating the kingdom of God um, in the UK and beyond. Yeah, I also think it's about the future. Yes, you quite rightly point out that um, the history is important, but also the future. If we do not demonstrably represent, and visually represent a range of people, then that undermines our witness, as you point out. And um, 
I just think, you know, one of the things that really encourages me is when I see young people offering their gifts. If they don't see a place or a space for those gifts, they are reluctant to offer them because it says to them volubly that perhaps those gifts aren't necessarily needed or welcomed here in this church. Uh, so awareness is always a good start, but action towards addressing some of those issues are really important. And I'm hoping that the last few months has certainly stimulated discussion on this topic and, you know, the inclusion of Black, Asian and minority ethnic people, but we're also hoping that it galvanises us to action. So it's not just about saying things historically, but it's about moving towards making a transformation, not just a change, a transformation of our ways of thinking and being so that they become a powerful witness to all the others around us. Martin Luther King had a dream or a vision that one day black people, all people will be judged not on the color of their skin or their culture, but on the content of their character. And I think many share that vision of society, a world, a church that doesn't judge by skin color, by culture, by creed, but leaves the judging up to God and works for equality and harmony for all people to flourish. So I want to see that dream and see that vision. At the moment for, for many, it's been a nightmare, 2020, the George Floyd situation and, and the riots in, in the United States and the situation here in the UK. But the dream is, it could be a beautiful vision, but tough talking and um, owning up to the reality is it, so important. And that's what Black History does. Black History Month opens the door for all people to see the contributions uh, and to celebrate with people of, of colour. Oh, I love that idea of reconciliation and uh, what really encapsulated by that wonderful Hebrew word, shalom. Shalom means peace, but it also means wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And if we are to truly experience shalom in the church, we need to own what it means to be a reconciled people. And a reconciled people means noticing who is not here, who does not share the presence, the power, and the, um, the ability to convey the richness of what it means to be loved by God equally. Uh, and so we have to acknowledge that first and move to a point where we're asking ourselves, what is God asking us to be at this point? <laughs>